day is different. I recommend you wake up a little earlier before people get their hooks in you so you can get clarity. I'm talking mental clarity because that's important. So you're going to get it at the beginning of the day and then whatever energy was taken away from you is when I put it back at the end of the day. So I'm real big on energy management. Yeah. No problem. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush to go anywhere. Anybody else? Yes. Okay, I'm going to ask you this. When you think in terms of all of us have 24 hours on this planet, you know? That's right. But I feel, I think you may be a little bit above average in terms of the kind of schedule. I mean, I don't know how to conceptualize that. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? But you have a real busy schedule from mm -hmm. what you said. Mm -hmm. So on the average, we would, uh, our time management might be a little different in terms of what it would look like in the course of that day. And so I'm just wondering, uh, in maximizing some of what you you said to us, what areas do you think, I mean, uh, you know, I don't know that you can say that from an individual, and I, I think that that's where the workshop mm -hmm. comes in, because mm -hmm. it's going to be all individual. Absolutely, yeah. And so I, that, that's what I like to kind of talk about much more at this point in my life in terms of where and what and how to strengthen where I am. I tell you what, for purposes of time, but I'm, I'm going to go into it right now. Everybody make sure. You get one of my cards on it with the email. Okay. If you want me to customize some strategies for you and send it back over to you, I will. I don't have a problem with that. So I'm gonna everybody come get my information. But I can tell you this: work. Some people work 12 hours or 14 hours because they feel like they have to. If what's required is eight or nine or ten, I do understand. But delegation is another big word. Some people don't have anybody to delegate to. And when I say you don't have anybody to delegate to, that means you have to go back to the drawing board and empower yourself with more skills. Now, the only way I can do what I do, I have a staff of people that help me with the television and radio show. I have a very, very supportive wife. See, it makes it easier for me to manage my schedule because I'm not getting any resistance. See, a lot of people have resistance in their household because people are zapping your energy away. You're wasting energy fighting with people over things that have a, that, that, that you have to fight you have to fight for happiness in a natural flow of things. So some categories that you might want to be able to cut down if you're working 14 hours, you may want to cut it down to 12. See, I'm, I'm asking you to do a small graduation. Change is not easy. You have to do a small graduation. If you're working 14 hours, let, let me just say this. Think about the extra four hours that you're there. Are you getting that much more done? by working 14, then 10, or even 8. If it's no, then go home after 8. You see, because you're taking away now from your family time or any other time that you think you may have. Now, I'm not telling you what to do or how to do it, but I'm telling you that a lot of us are trapped into bad habits. And if we knew better habits, we could do more work in a smaller period of time to become more. See, all, all I care about is two words with my staff. Efficiency and productivity. You can say anything to me, but was it done efficiently and were you productive? See, productivity is like this. Look at my body language. This is productivity. Every day. Everything I do, every action I take, every movement that I make moves me closer towards the finish line of success. See, a procrastinator, they're not moving forward. They're doing this. They're moving backwards. Or they stay stuck like a stick in the mud because they don't have the resources. When you are empowered, and I recommend that you teach everybody in your, on your staff or your department or even your students to become more empowered. Everybody attacks the work instead of attacking each other. See, once you know how, it's a beautiful thing. You have a smile on your face all the time. I only am energetic and excited about explaining it to you because I use these strategies day in and day out. Let me ask you a question. Do you think I could explain it to you like this if, if I wasn't using it? There's no way I could break it all down. But see, this is, what I, this is my process. It's my approach. It's my methodology. It's my system. And it works. And, and, and this comes from the top 3% of the most successful people in the world. Everyone, you, everyone has a different system, but it all, it all mirrors each other. They use the same type of strategies to get their stuff done. See, I used to try to reinvent the wheel until I learned the journalism technique. Now I understand that if you want to solve any problem, Six simple questions, all you got to do is ask yourself. And then you're going to ask yourself why five times to get to the grassroots. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. Once you come up with the, with the solutions to fix that statement, your whole life will start going in another direction. 
Now, when it comes to commuting, I would always recommend that you use the commute time wisely for auditory learning. Self-empowerment is key. You had another question or comment? I was going to say, with that, is it unreasonable to think in terms of resources uh, when, you, when, I, when I think about um, time spent driving, listening to tapes? There are various kinds of tapes that I'm thinking that could be very helpful. Uh, but when you think about subliminal kinds of tapes, are there any that... Make sense to you? Yes. Well, I, well if, again, if you email me, I can pull some okay, off the yeah, shelf yeah. that I have in my library at home. But I, I would always recommend go to your greatest area of need first. Mm -hmm. What is your limitation? You got. It, it's hard to look yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, I'm pretty bad at X, Y, and Z. And if you're bad at it, go buy some audio programs. And then brush up on those skills because normally when somebody has written a book, or they've taken the time to write an audio program or, or record an audio program, they know what they're talking about. And you can benefit great, a great deal from that. The higher your education, the less somebody is going to really teach you, to be honest with you. 80% of what it is that I taught in here, most of you knew it. You may not have known that you were doing it, but I just gave you the technical term of it. So, Mr. Ellaby, I saw you writing specific things down. You said, oh, I do that. You shook your head. But then you had that epiphany within that maybe 15 to 20 percent that you did not know. Let me ask you a question. What, what part of here were you enlightened about that you were not aware of or what you weren't thinking about before you took this course? I mean, you know, I realize that time management uh, is really important. But when you talk about planning and actually putting it down with prioritizing right. and really asking yourself the question and then repeating those questions over and over, you know, it becomes really important because, again, it becomes a learned skill. Absolutely. That I hadn't thought about in terms yeah. of a daily basis. And yet, I, my area of pro procrastination is where I've got to work on that. And so you give me some real food for thought. I love it, and I just hope that we have an opportunity to really see you a whole day to do this again because I have so many questions. Another thing I want to add, too, and, 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 and uh, again, I'm not going anywhere, you know, so if you got any more questions for me, I'd be more than happy to stay. 95% of written goals manifest themselves into completion. Yeah. That's a scientific proven yeah, fact. 95% of written goals manifest themselves into completion. So I constantly keep a to-do list mm -hmm. with 10 lines on it. Mm -hmm. And every day, those lines, 7 to 10 things are on those lines. Every single day, it's about prioritizing. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that we think are priorities are not. Some things are urgent, and they're not important. You see? It's a, I have a great reference tool for you, by the way. On page number three. When you're in the zone, it says the zone, they call it, this is taken from Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. When they say you're in the zone, that's quadrant number two. That's the zone of productivity. When you're in quadrant number one, as you can see, they have some of the characteristics in there. Quadrant number one is crisis, pressure, and projects from, uh, pressure from project deadlines. Okay, sometimes... People have a false deadline. What's important to me is not important to you. What's urgent to me is not urgent to you. So see, we have a different way to communicate in the workplace, and people don't know how to effectively do that, and that's why they say, well, get back to me whenever. Get back to me ASAP. Is that specific? Specificity is not, it's not get back to me 5 p.m. April 22nd, 5 p.m. That's specific. ASAP and whenever, you don't know when that is. Okay, so we have to speak to each other in more specific terms, and you'll get better results. So you can follow that system of prioritization as well. you got to determine what's urgent and what's important, and that's how I determine...